Are we on? Yes. Very good. Well, let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Father. And welcome. It's good to have you. It's a pleasure to, to see you. We made room for 150, and there's three, six, nine, eleven. So maybe one more coming in the door, twelve. But it's good to have you. As Jesus said, where there's two or three gathered in his name, he is here. So he's in our midst. So thank you. Welcome. And the rest of the chairs, I think the angels will take care of it. They will ah, fill those chairs. So, and I'm sure there's people who will be joining us via live, live stream on Facebook and YouTube. I'm not advertising it, but um, I have a YouTube channel. I'm kind of advertising it. So um, you can find with me if you type on YouTube Padre, which means Father, Spanish, by the way. Then my name is Francisco Onate Vargas, and uh, my channel name is Bethania, and uh, Spanish, which means Bethany. So that's my channel name, and you can subscribe. I haven't put any a, a lot of stuff on there, but um, hopefully in the next few weeks I'll put some reflections, uh, Lenten uh, reflections. So um, if you subscribe, you can get the, the notification that I have posted something on there. Okay, well, I gave this talk, what was it, a week ago? Two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago on confession, the sacrament of confession. And it's going to be pretty much about the same thing what I talked about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, maybe add in a few more things, because I just didn't read from a paper. It was, uh, I prepared, of course, but uh, a lot of things will be new. So uh, my hope here, and I pray that this will be helpful to you, uh, because especially during this uh, Lenten journey, uh, we should be uh, preparing ourselves to uh, God of confession. If we haven't done that, but Hopefully we'll do it again. Uh, so to take this uh, beautiful grace and, re and in receiving this beautiful sacrament, the sacrament of reconciliation and confession. And I mentioned also before that I will not be talking about what the sacrament, the dignity of the sacrament. I'm not convincing anyone that you should go to, the, to a Catholic priest who ha has been validly ordained uh, to celebrate this uh, holy sacrament. I'm not convincing anyone. I believe that those who are here believe in the sacrament of confession. Those who are watching perhaps believe, maybe not, maybe yes. But it's, it is more informational. It is practical to help you. My goal is to help you have a good confession. Because oftentimes we misuse this beautiful sacrament. We misuse it and abuse it. We think that it's just a, like a decoration because it is there. Well, this might as well have it. We should have it. We should go to confession and, and take this beautiful grace uh, in this sacrament as we receive the sacrament, but we should do it with uh, respect and dignity because it is the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of salvation in which we have an encounter with Christ. So once again, this hopefully would help you to uh, prepare yourself, to better prepare yourself so that you can have a good compassion, so that you can really have that re-encounter with Jesus Christ in this holy sacrament. And I'll begin with this um, quote from St. Faustina, and basically uh, this is God telling her this, tell, the, tell souls where they are to look for solace, that is, in the tribunal of mercy. This is what the sacrament of confession is. It is a tribunal of mercy. God always being the judge. We are the penitent. God is the, the, the doctor. We are the ones who are sick, who are ill. We are the lepers, which is heard about uh, the reading from the leper and Jesus. So we got a confession to this tribunal of mercy, to receive mercy, to receive the graces we need to remain faithful to God. There the greatest miracles take place and are incessantly repeated. Every time we got a confession, a miracle happens. The miracle that our sins are being absolved, we are being cleansed, we are being... Uh, having that encounter with Christ and we are given the grace to continue to remain faithful to Christ, to go out there and to do, to do what, is, what he's asking of us. Every time we go to confession, a beautiful miracle happens. It is repeated over and over again. To avail oneself of this miracle, it is not necessary to go in a great pilgrimage or to carry out some external ceremony. It suffices to come with faith to the feet of my representative, the priest, 
or to reveal to him one's misery. We are in misery every time we commit a sin because we choose everything else or someone else other than God. And that's what sin is. We're, it's to miss the mark. We, we're missing the mark every time we say no to God. And we are uh, in misery. But we go to this tribunal of mercy to receive the mercy that we need, to receive the graces that we need so that we may not live any longer in misery, but in grace. And the miracle of divine mercy will be fully demonstrated. We're a soul like a decaying corpse so that from a human standpoint, there will be no hope of restoration and everything would already be lost. It is not so with God. The miracle of divine mercy restores that soul in full to its fullness. How miserable are those who do not take advantage of the miracle of God's mercy. You will call out in vain, but it will be too late. So once again, we are here. It's truly a blessing. It's truly a blessing to those who are watching us that uh, hopefully we uh, come to a better understanding of what this sacrament is so that we can have a good confession, so that we can fully plunge our soul into this fountain of mercy and allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit to have that encounter with Christ. St. Thomas Aquinas says, In the life of the body, a man is sometimes sick, and unless he takes medicine, he will die. Even so, in the spiritual life, a man is, is sick on account of sin. For that reason, he needs medicine so that he may be restored to health. And this grace is bestowed in the sacrament of penance. And by the way, it can be the sac called the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of salvation, some, some people call it, confession. It is the same. It is the tribunal of mercy. And when we go to confession, we receive the medicine that we need. The medicine that we need because from, the, from this doctor, Jesus Christ. When we go to confession, then we uh, are able to receive Holy Communion. When we receive Holy Communion, uh, the most blessed sacrament that we receive is not like a candy because we were good. We give that to a child. But when we receive Holy Communion, after we had a very good confession, we can get Holy Communion because that's the medicine for our soul. It is the medicine that the soul needs to remain faithful to God. So it is not a candy. It is the medicine that we need. But the medicine, when you go to confession, is like the, uh, when you go to the hospital, when you go to confession and the doctor is treating you, let me get this right there. The doctor is treating you to have the diagnosis, to see what you need. The medicine starts right there. It's like the IV that you get. And then they'll put you into, a, into the room and then you get treated as needed. Then the Holy Communion. So see it as the, the medicine the, the soul receives and it is restored right there. If you need more information about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, let me just get the marker. You can go to CCC. This is an invisible marker, by the way. Only holy <laughs> people will be able to see it. <laughs> this is a regular marker that people Sinners like you and me are able to see it, but we are all in need of His mercy. 1422 through 1498. It talks all about, so you have 76 numbers or paragraphs, whatever you want to call it. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, it talks all about confession. The mediation, um, uh, mediated from Jesus Christ, the priest acting in persona Christi. It is the flowing of grace. It talks all about confession. So once again, you can reference that uh, when you talk to some, someone about confession. John 20, this is the Gospel of John, not any other John. 20, 21, 23, it says, Jesus said to them again, Jesus had to repeat, things over and over because <laughs> them disciples didn't listen. Aren't we the same? Mm -hmm. That's why we have to go to confession over and over again because we keep falling into temptation, into sin. He says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive 
the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Matthew 16, 19 tells us that pretty much the same thing. NT means uh, Mark. 16, chapter 16, verses, verse uh, 19. And this gives references, reference to the uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 1444. Amen, I say to you, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Matthew, just in case we didn't get it the first time, Jesus knew better. He's like, well, one more time, a, a few chapters later, same gospel, Matthew 18, 18, he says, Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. The authority given to the priest, to the church, mediated through the, through the priest uh, who is acting in persona Christi in the person of Christ. We have this authority because that, there, there are some um, sins that, uh, that the priest might not be able to, to absolve. Or sometimes um, the penitent comes in and for various reasons the priest is not able to, to give absolution to the penitent. And that is, for example, someone comes, and once again, it's not from here, and with this, I'm not revealing any, I'm just using examples, okay? Uh, as a priest, I cannot uh, break the seal of confession. So the examples that I'm using is from far, far away, uh, from La La Land, okay? Not from here. And they're just made up. If somebody comes to confession and says, Father, I did uh, this, I stole, I, um, whatever sins he committed, but I am not sorry. I don't feel sorry for my sins. Then I cannot give absolution. The person has to say, I am sorry for because I did that. And if the person says, well, I'm not sorry, I don't, I don't, then I can't give absolution. I just pray for the person so that he may be given the grace to feel sorry, to feel pain for what he had done, and then come back and see me again. Or the person might say, um, Father, I want you to forgive me because I am going to steal a bank tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to go and break in and, and just steal money from the bank. No. We're, this is not a pre-made uh, grace. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. We can't absolve from sins that people will do tomorrow. So th that's just an example. Okay, so to better prepare. So you have the authority given by, uh, by, the, by God to the priest. And how do we have a good confession? I'm going to erase this. I'm sure you guys have it. For those who do know me, my name is Father Francisco. For those who do not know me, my name is still Father Francisco. It hasn't changed. <laughs> okay, to, go to, to, to have a, a, better, a good confession. And I have an acronym that I share with you. It's called SCAPE. The first one, the E, it is for examination of conscience. Before I got a confession, if I miss any of these steps, I'm not doing a good confession. St. Therese says, and I think it was St. Teresa, Teresa of Avila, she says that a lot of Christians, notice, she said a lot of Christians, those who are followers of Christ, those who uh, claim to believe in Jesus, those who claim to believe in the power of the sacraments. A lot of Christians are in hell because of a bad confession. When I read that, I, it made me, I got scared. A lot of Christians are in hell because of a bad confession. And that tells me that I should really pay close attention to what I'm doing so that I'm not abusing and misusing the, the sacraments. So that when I got a confession, I really got a confession. I really had this encounter with Jesus. And I really um, opened my heart so that I can receive the grace to continue on with my life with the mission that he has entrusted to me. So if any of these steps are, uh, if we miss any of these steps, then we're not having a good confession. The first one being ex examination of conscience. 
the examination of conscience. What do I do there? Well, I examine my conscience. What have I done? I mentioned that sin, is, it has different definitions, but really sin is separating from the love of God, saying no to God. God, I'm going to do it my way. Don't need your advice here. Uh, sin is really missing the mark. So I need to examine in w the ways in which I have said no to God. And to do that, the church, Holy Mother Church is so good. In her wisdom, she provides the guidance so that we may be able to have a good compassion. Here, everyone should have go through this, what we call the Ten Commandments. And I'm hoping, command men. Is that right? Very good. I'm hoping and praying that we all know the Ten Commandments. We should know them. God in his infinite wisdom, he knew that ten was good. In the Jewish tradition, there are 613 commandments. Mm. Imagine to learn all those 613. God was like, you know what, let's just keep it down to 10. <laughs> if they can keep up with 613, it's going to be difficult to, if they can keep up with 10, it's going to be difficult to keep up with 613. So let's just keep it down to more, okay? So we should know the 10 commandments because the 10 commandments are the guidance. It is the GPS to get us to heaven. The goal is to get to heaven. And the Holy Sacrament of Reconciliation, it is our guide, it is the grace that we need to get to heaven, to be on the right track so that we do not miss the mark, so that we may remain with God. So the Ten Commandments are the instructions, or what I call the GPS. By the way, GPS means Global Positioning System. The thing that, I don't think, a lot of people have the GPS that you put on the dashboard or on the windshield. Now we, have, we use what we call phones. We have the GPS there to get us from point A to point B. Our final destination is heaven. Philippians 3, something in Philippians, 326, I would say. Uh, our citizenship is in heaven. We were created to be united with our creator. From point A, from point A to point B. Earth, and this is heaven. Well, that's not heaven, that's a B, but that's the final destination. Heaven. This is the global position system, the, um, the GPS, the Ten Commandments, or the GPS that we need to get to heaven. If I do not know the Ten Commandments, how am I going to get to heaven? It's going to be very difficult. Or what I call the GPS as God's powerful, oops, there's a U, signs. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. God's powerful signs, GPS, the Ten Commandments, and we know them. We we'll start with the first one. What is the first commandment? Anybody? Any takers? Okay, I heard two people. Very good. I'm just going to put God. Love God with all your heart, with all your being. Uh, just love God because he's the, he the one. Number two. Okay, very good. We heard one. Are you guys? Yes, you, you agree? Yes. How about the ones watching us? You guys agree? <laughs> so we'll keep it on God. Honor, I love God, and I have the reverence for his name, because it is the most beautiful name there is, the name of God. Three. Sunday, keep holy. Oh, keep holy. Sunday holy. The holy days. We're going to keep it at God. So the first three are about God. Yeah. Okay, fourth. You said it, sir. Uh, Honor your parents. Yeah. I'm going to keep it as and as for neighbor. They're not our neighbors, but they're our parents. They're people. So neighbor. <laughs> Five. I shall not kill. <laughs> okay, neighbor. You shall not kill. Six. Uh, not quiet, no. but a little bit later, Steel? down the road. Steel? No. You want to take a shortcut, but that's a little no. bit down the road. <laughs> what is it, uh, sex? Anybody? Do not commit adultery. Anything that has to do with sexuality, so neighbor. And if I'm doing that. <laughs> Some are here, but you know. <laughs> so anything, uh, do not commit adultery. Anything that has to do with sexual sins. 
abortion, pornography, uh, rape, uh, masturbation, uh, anything that has to do with our sexuality. God has created us as sexual beings, but there is an order for everything. And God wants us to follow this GPS, this guideline, so that we can get to heaven. Seven. Okay, shall not steal. Eight. Bear false, wit false witnesses, neighbor. Nine. Okay, shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Yeah, very good. And ten. Say it again. Goods. You should not cover your neighbor's goods. Okay, very good. My advice here is for all of you to go back and relearn them. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a look at this, at this commandments again. Because then we'll be taking shortcuts and making U-turns and going to the wrong places. Because if we do not know the, the Ten Commandments, I mean, we might go to confession, not have a good confession. We might be missing on the grace. Uh, I can say I'm a good Catholic. I pray. Yes, I can be a good Catholic, but I can be on the right path. But outside the path, let's say this is the path. I can be on the, on the path. This is the path that I need to follow, but I'm outside the path. Does that make sense? So this, um, my advice to you once again, you, you, should, <clears throat> you should be able to, keep, uh, to memorize them if you read them daily, once a day. In, a, in two weeks, maybe you'll have them down. But it is not just about memorizing them. We have to learn them, get the information, but from the mind to the heart, ponder it in your heart and then in your life. So if it goes from here to here and then in your life, because the, the, that's the, the main goal, to know them, but really to apply them, to live them out, because they are the GPS in, in our life. Okay, so you know the Ten Commandments. Do you know the precepts of the church? Is this the first time we hear this? <laughs> Well, we're going to leave it at seven. That's all we need. The first one. To attend Mass on Sundays on, and on Holy Days of Obligation. So we're going to put Mass. To observe the days of fasting and penance. Fast and penance. Lenten's journey. Third. <clears throat> by the way, the, the order can change on this one. Not on this one, but on this one. Third. Um, to... Go to confession at least once a year to a Catholic priest, not to a tree or a <laughs> Catholic priest. It has to be validly ordained. This is what we're talking about here. This is what the church asks us to do. Four, to receive Jesus Christ in the most holy Eucharist at least uh, the, during the Easter season. Five, to contribute to the support of the church as your means allow you. Six, to observe the laws concerning holy matrimony. There it is, marriage. And seventh, to participate in the church's mission of evangelization. In other words, to get involved. This is what a, a Christian disciple means. To get involved, to spread the faith, to share the good news of salvation. So evangelization, we'll leave it at evangelio. That's a Spanish, by the way. Yes, sir. Why is the order of the Ten Commandments important? That's a good question. Why is the order of the Ten Commandments important? Um, this is how they were given to Moses. Right. And we just follow it. Okay. And, and yeah, that's how they were given to uh, divine revelation. Yes. I think we assume that the, the first ones are more important. Yeah, but yeah. God, the, the, in the order that the, the world ones are less important. Yeah, God. I mean, not less important. Not less, but <laughs> God, so you see the first three, and it would really, which is beautiful. The first three, I mean, it's all about God, Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, like the Trinity. And then everything else, which is seven, seven is a perfect number, everything else. So the number uh, is love God and love others as yourself, because when you, we do that, then we're loving God. So it's a, it is a circle of grace. A good question. Very good. Okay, so those are the precepts of the church. Why do I need to know that? Because when someone asks where this confession uh, follows there, this is the Holy Mother Church asks us to go to confession. Should I go to confession once a year? No. 
Uh, I should go to confession if I have committed a mortal sin. And for that, I have to have the intention, the, the knowledge, know that it's bad, that it's bigger. So we have venial sins and, and mortal sins, so it has, it has to be grave, the gravity. Um, first, I know that it's, that it's, that it's bad, so it's uh, gravity, and then I consent to it. I have the intention and I commit the sin. And I got a confession. Uh, for that, I know the commandments, and I examine my conscience to know which one is bigger, which one is, goes where. But really, sin is anything that separates, separates us from the love of God, that we're missing the mark, and we ask for the grace so that we may be able to return back to God, so that we can make a U-turn, follow God's powerful signs, so that we can, back, we can come back to Him. Not to man or to anything else, but to Him. Okay, examination of conscience. Now we go to S. What do you think S is? What was that? Sorrow. Sorrow, very good. Don't feel bad, just say it. If it's, bad, if it's not the right answer, we'll still thank you for participating. You get a gold star. <laughs> Sorrow for your sins. To feel the pain. We ask for the grace. This, and by the way, when we do the examination of conscience, I don't uh, advise you to do it while, while you're driving. It should be a prayerful. A, a time, you set a time aside to pray, to look, into, to look into yourself, so that you may re-encounter God. It's a, a time that you set aside to pray. And then you ask for the grace so that you may feel bad for what you've done, that I may feel the pain, because in all these things, I have said no to God and yes to myself or to whatever, wherever, whatever else out there. Um, Mary Ellen, I think last time, gave us a, a guideline that has different questions that go for, to do a, a good examination of conscience. And there should be back there. What could does somebody have? What color is the examination? No, it's, they're over there. Oh. Oh. They're back there. Yeah. So I... Um, I ask myself in okay. which areas I have said no to God. And I ask for the grace so that I can feel bad for that. Because if I don't have that, then I'm not repenting. What is the point of going to confession if I do not admit that I have done something wrong? This should lead to conversion, having a conversion, a change of heart. There should be a movement there. So if whatever I did, if I don't feel the pain, if I don't feel that, my goodness, I, I let my God down. So there's no point of going to confession. You can go to confession. But once again, if you tell me, I don't feel sorry for your sins, I'm not going to give you a solution. You're wasting my time and maybe I'm wasting yours. I don't know. I can pray for you and bless you. But if you don't feel sorry for what you've done, then what's the point? There is one sin that can be that cannot be forgiven. The unforgivable sin. And I think uh, it, it goes. And that is the sin against the Holy Spirit. The sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Saying something sacrilegious against the Holy Spirit. Anything else can be forgiven. And Jesus said it. Actually, in the three Gospels, the three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, by the way, I need a bigger board, okay? <laughs> Matthew 12, 31, 32. That's a three right there. Mark, oops, 3, 28, 29, and Luke 12, 10. This is the unforgivable sin, the sin against the Holy Spirit. In other words, I do not want God's mercy. God cannot forgive that. Because we are refusing, it's a total refusal, refusal of God's mercy. I'm saying basically, I don't need you. You are not my God and you will never be my God. <coughs> basically, I'm saying no to salvation, no to heaven, and yes to hell. I don't need the God's powerful signs. I don't need this GPS, this nonsense. That is the sin that cannot be forgiven. Six things can go there. Despair, which is giving up hope. 
against the Holy Spirit. I'm saying, I don't have any hope. Presumption. To believe salvation can be attained without God's help. If, I'm, if I say, I can go to heaven without God. Well, nobody, because God owns heaven. Okay? He's, he's the creator of all, so you can't get to heaven. You don't have the keys. Impenitence, which means unrepentant. If I'm impenitent, I'm being unrepentant. I do not want to repent for the things that I have done. That is the sin against the Holy Spirit. In other words, no intention of compensating. No intention of trying, striving to change. No intention of changing. Or no sorrow for what I've done. That is the, the sin against the Holy Spirit. With this, I'm not saying that we should be torturing ourselves because what we've done, God doesn't want that. God wants a contrite heart, which means having a heart that is moved to receive God's grace, that we remain faithful. I did that, and I recognize that I did that. It is bad, but I want His grace so that I, I can change. Like a child, returning to the Father, asking for help. That's the attitude that we should have. Obstinacy. These are basically the hardness of heart. I'm just being stubborn. I don't want to change. Resisting the truth. If I say, I am going to resist Jesus' help. And I am, I am going to resist the word of God. All of this can be applied to the sin, unforgivable sin. I'm saying no to the light, no to the truth, to the, to the way which is uh, received in the sacrament given by Christ. And finally, envy of others' spiritual welfare. It is not about competition, but once again, fidelity. The unforgivable sin can be committed when I am envious about someone else's spiritual journey. Let me explain. When I am envious, but I refuse to accept the grace. Because oftentimes we can say, or someone can say, you know what, I'm envious that Mary Ellen is just so prayerful, that she's so reverent, that she's, I mean, that's not the sin against the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong. Because you can do that. I can do that. I can be reverent to it. And maybe ask her very, in a very nice way, hey, what do you do to, have, to get to that point of, you know, of that, and to that point in your spiritual life. Well, I read, I go to confession, I receive the Holy Sacrament, I pray, I do meditation, blah, blah, blah. See, that's not the sin that I'm talking about. The sin against the, the Holy Spirit is when I'm envious of the, the spiritual graces the older one has. But I'm more envious because I don't want it. Because I want, I refuse it. Make sense? Okay? Very good. See, I told you there was going to be more covered this time. So it is not about competition, it is about fidelity. In the spiritual life, we do not have a spiritual meter to see, oh, oh we can't check your, like we do your temperature, we can't check how holy you are. I would say, by the way, that the, the way to measure um, holiness is by the way we show mercy, by the way we, uh, we practice charity, giving of ourselves to others. The measure of love is to love without measure. That's what Jesus did. Okay. That's good for uh, sorrow. See, what is the C for? Confession. Am I leaving one there? No. Confession. I already examined my, my conscience. This is what I did in a prayerful way. I asked the Holy Spirit to help me to see, to see my soul in the darkness, because that's sin. And then to see my soul in the light of Christ. I'm going from darkness into the light of Christ. I did all this, I feel pain, then I go to confession. I already examined and I, all the commitments, this is what I did. You can take notes. By the way, if you do that, make sure you just, only you understand. 
if your spouse or someone else reads that, like, oh goodness gracious, <laughs> that will, that might be that might lead to another sin. Okay, we don't want that. So you can t you can take notes because you might forget. So take notes. Make sure you you are the only one that knows what you have written down, and bring that to the confessional. And just tell the priest when you go to confession, you come in in a very humble way. Once again, this is a tribunal of mercy. Come to confession. If there's a line in the confessional, that's not the time to play with your cell phones, to watch YouTube, even if you're watching my video on YouTube. <laughs> that's not the time. That's not a time to be on Facebook, TikTok. I should be getting paid for this. I'm advertising all these companies. <laughs> that's not the time for that. It is a time to pray. Bring a rosary with you. Pray for the unborn. Pray for those babies who, who are in, the, in their mother's womb and perhaps they're thinking about uh, having an abortion. Pray for the needs of our nation. Pray for your family. We all have needs, don't we? We'll pray. Use that time to pray because you already you are prepared. Because you already did that. This. Examine your conscience. You felt uh, pain for your sins. You pray. Then you're ready to go in. To go to have the, the grace needed. So you use that time to pray. It is not the time to talk to your fellow co-worker, whoever's next to you. Fellow parishioner. That's not the time. That's the, the only person that you should be talking to is just one person, and that's Jesus Christ in prayer. Now, don't do it out loud because you might disturb the next person. So pray. You go to confession. There's not really a perfect formula to go to confession. Sometimes when the person comes in, Father, can you please help me because I, have, I don't know how to do this. I don't know either. There's no perfect way. The only thing that we need is, is our heart to be open, to allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit. And just, just say, Father, forgive me, I have sinned. Saying that, that's recognizing, recognizing that we are sinners. And we need this judge to help us, to give us his mercy. Father, I have sinned. When they say, I don't know how to go to confession, I tell them, do you have an examination of conscience? What is that? Well, that tells me you didn't have one. Okay, I just go down and I just try to mention some sin to help the person out. But that's not you. Because when you go to confession, you already, you're gonna, you, you already did this. And just tell everything that you've done. If you have it, if you wrote it down, just say it. I do not need to hear any details. The first thing that I need to hear is how long was your last confession? A month? years, 10 years, 30 years, whatever. That's what I need so I can give you some guidance or advice at the end. That's all I need, please. And you just tell me your, your sins. Just na name the sin. Everything. You can begin from the big ones to or the small ones, whatever. Just say it all. It says in the Catechism of the Catholic Church 1493, it says, one who desires to obtain reconciliation with God and with the church must confess to a priest, all the unconfessed sins. We have to name the sins. Verbally, vocally, we have to say the sins. I have a, a, my brother-in-law, he's, he's um, mute and he can, he can talk. How do I do that? He writes his sins down. And then when he's confessing, he just tells his sins. Not obviously he can talk, but he, he's got the intention, like he's saying it to me but I think all of you can talk. So you have to name the sin. Judas Iscariot didn't make it to heaven because he did not confess his sin. He recognized, he knew he did wrong. That's why he hung himself. Because he knew I really messed up, didn't I? But he was very pride. He had a lot of pride. He had been very prideful. He was not able to go to Jesus and said, have mercy on me. Can you forgive me? This is the power of the sacrament. We have to say it. If we don't say it, you're not getting absolution. If I don't hear the sin, you can say it in your mind as many times as you want. But if you don't say it, I cannot give you absolution for, for that sin. And sometimes people come, not here, again, another place. And at different ages, people are like, Father, um, I sinned, but they don't say anything. Well, I'm sorry, I can't give you absolution. If you don't say anything, you just, you just need to tell me one sin to 
give you absolution. If you don't say anything, there's nothing I can do. This is compassion. This is not time. This is not therapy. This is not a time to talk. So we have to name the sins. We have to just say it. Name the sin. If I need any um, details, I would ask. Because, for example, that's why it's very essential that we know the the, the commandments. Because some people just name the commandment. They say, "Well, Father, forgive me for, because I I have sinned. I have sinned against the first commandment and the." Uh, Sixth commandment and the uh, eighth commandment. Okay, have a great day. God bless you. What about my absolution? You have to name the sin. Because a lot of things go in all those commandments. Well, Father, uh, I did not pray. That's why this is very helpful. The, the words. Do I pray? Do I express my gratitude to God? Uh, do, uh, have I broken uh, promises, oaths, or vows to God? All those things. Father, and then I was disrespectful to my parents. I stole, whatever, okay. And then I'm like, anything else? No, that's it. Um, what do you do in the Sixth Commandment? What happened? Well, I, I didn't go to church last Sunday. Beautiful, that's sins against sexuality. If you do not know the commandments, how are you gonna name the sin? So that's why it's very important that you we just don't name the commandment, but we tell the sin. We name the sin. Go to confession, tell everything. Everything. You know, the priest, we're given the grace to just forget it all. I've been ordained two years and six days, seven days, and I think I've heard it all. I'm not scandalized. I'm not. I heard everything. As um, humans, we're capable, capable of building so many things, but we're also capable of destroying. And a lot of times we destroy people's feelings because we have destroyed the grace that God has given us through the sacrament. Because oftentimes we say, I have my own GPS. I don't need God's GPS. That's when we sin. So I heard it all. Don't worry about the priest. Um, memorizing or thinking, oh, well, that, we don't do that. I don't have the time, and I have my life, too. So don't worry. Just There's fear, there's shame when we go to confession. But St. Alphonsus of, uh, Alphonse of Liguori, uh, he says that shame and guilt is something that the devil gives us back when we go to confession. He took away shame and guilt when we were sinning. Because when we commit a sin, we're not afraid. We don't feel shame and guilt. We just do it. And by the way, we sin because sin is, is, is pleasant. We do it because we like it. Concupiscence, the flesh. So the devil takes that away. Don't be open. It's okay. It's fine. Everybody's doing it. When we go to confession, when we prepare, when we're about to go to confession, we are all nervous and sweating and we feel like very anxious and we feel shame. What is the priest going to think of me? Blah, blah, blah. And this. We feel that shame and guilt because the devil gives it back because he doesn't want us to go to confession. He doesn't want us to go to the tribunal of mercy. Don't listen to him. If you feel like that, good. Praise God because that will help us here to feel pain for our sins. That's good to help us to remind us that we are not God, that God is our God, and that we need him. Okay? So we've got a confession and tell everything to the priest. Then we have the A, which is? Absolution. Absolution or amendment. Is it one M? I think so, right? Or two? Any teachers here? No? I think it's one M, isn't it? <laughs> we'll, we'll go with one M today. Yeah. If you need another one, just add it to your notes. <laughs> amendment or absolution. I did all that, went to confession. <clears throat> then I have the purpose the intention to amend, to change. If not, what's the point? If I had a good examination of conscience, I felt the pain, then I went to confession, but then I don't have any, any intention of changing the conversion of heart. As St. Therese said, if I miss anything of that, I, may, I might end up in another place, not heaven. We don't want that. So I have the, um, uh, the intention to change, to amend, to to, uh, or what we call retribution to. 
if whatever I did, if there's any way I can change that, good. If not, sometimes we can't. If I, uh, if I um, damaged someone's reputation, how do you fix that? You can't. It's very difficult. You go to confession, you are forgiven. But when we go to confession, we are forgiven by Almighty God. But we are still responsible for the consequences that that sin caused. We get the, God is saying like, because uh, we are his children. Okay, fool. Okay, it doesn't cover that, but you were, okay, fine. You were fool, fine. I, I forgive you. I'm going to give you the grace to try again. To use my GPS. But then, because you damaged this person's reputation, I forgive you for doing that. But then the cost, the, the damage that was done, you are responsible for that. You're gonna, you, we have to pay the cost for that. And we do that in purgatory before we get to heaven. But we can start paying for the damages that we've done, that we caused through our sin here on earth. Go back to sorrow and by amending what I've done. And I mentioned, I think it's uh, uh, Peter, 1 Peter, 1 Peter 4 a says, Charity covers a multitude of sins. What a beautiful place. Charity covers a multitude of sin. So whatever we've done, the best way to cover a lot of those sins, by this I'm not saying just do charity and don't go to confession. No. I did all that in a way to amend that. Charity. What is charity? Caritas. I give myself out to others just as Jesus. I share the many blessings that he has given me. Feed the homeless, uh, the Beatitudes, um, and the corporal works of mercy, the spiritual works of mercy, all of those. Visit the sick. How can I give of the many things that God has given me? That can take care of a lot of the, a lot of the sins that I have committed. So I am in. Then, P. Penance. I'm going to go back here. Absolution. Absolution. When I received all the, uh, when I confessed all my sins, then the priest is going to give us uh, penance. Then after the penance, he'll give us absolution. The penance connected to sorrow for my sins and with uh, amendment. Usually very light penance. Hail Mary, Our Father, whatever, read the gospel, fast maybe. Very, very light penances. I will tell you that whatever penance you receive, once again, we should start amending. We should start doing something to pay back the damages that we, we caused because of our sins. So whatever penance you receive, do more. Go to Peter 1, uh, 1 Peter 4, 8, and just be charitable. Find ways in which you can help. If the preacher tells you three Hail Marys, I'm telling you, our Blessed Mother is very powerful. She's very good. She's our mother. But I'm sure that she wants us to do more for her son. And we do that when we take care of our neighbors. Because when we take care of our neighbors, we are taking care of God. So, in penance, challenge yourself for more. Corporal works of mercy and um, helping the, the, the needy and the poor. The, the priest will give you the absolution. God, the Father of mercy, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace in our soul before all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I usually, we usually impose, uh, lay our hands on you. By the way, I didn't give you general absolution. Okay? <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful formula. Sometimes when people come and they just, they, confession, it is not to have a conversation, a conversation with the priest. That's not the point. We have to respect the dignity of the sacrament. Some people want to talk about their Protestant brothers, their friends, something else. They want to ask. Uh, what they need to baptize their child? No. 
That's why we have a website with all the information. We have a bulletin. That's not, that's not the time to take care of business. So uh, you, we do not go to confession to talk to the priest. And sometimes, once again, not here, but people have come and they just talk and talk. And, and um, one time I forgot to give absolution. <laughs> oh, well, great, have a great day. You told me about everything else, but you never confessed anything. Oh, well, you did. Okay. And then the person's <laughs> like, can I get absolution? Thank you. I got a confession. I do this, but... If I said, if I did all these steps, but I don't get absolution, my sins are not absolved. I need to get absolution from the priest. So if the priest is very friendly, he gave you a lot of guidance and, and whatever, good. But make sure you get out of the box, the confessional, with the absolution. If he does not give you absolution, you, you could very well have a very good examination of conscience and go, gone through the steps. But if you did not get the absolution, your sins were not confessed. Tell the priest, can I please have the absolution? Then you can go on, go on with the, with the penance. When I got a confession, um, again, it is, you might get, before you get your penance, you might get a, uh, some guidance, advice from the priest, but should not be expected. Because we are not, well, I'm not, there are some priests who are, but. Uh, I'm not a licensed, uh, certified professional uh, uh, therapist or psychologist. I mean, we took some classes and spiritual direction and whatever. And really, the, the, the psychologist here is the Holy Spirit. We, um, we're just acting. We're the channel. Uh, and God is using us as the mediator to give you grace. But um, sometimes it, when they ask me, Father, is that it? What do you mean, is that it? You're not going to say anything? No. I mean, you don't have to hear anything from the priest. If you get some advice, some counsel, that's good. But you don't go there to get uh, therapy. Uh, what you go there, you go for the grace. And the grace is happening. And it will happen in the next few days or months. That is not limited. And if you get the absolution, that's all you need. The, God, uh, the Father tells you, uh, if Father tells you the penance, you need the absolution, you're good to go. So don't expect any, any, any advice or anything from the priest. Then, from there, so we have here scape. This should lead to that, which I call it Eucharist, Holy Communion. I did all of that, then that should lead me to receive Jesus in the most precious sac sacrament. I'm ready to receive him. Once again, it is the medicine that I need the medicine that the soul needs so that I may remain faithful to him, so that I may continue to follow him, so that I may follow his guidelines, his directions, his instructions, his commandments, so that I may be in eternity with him. I should be receiving Holy Communion. He should lead me to that. I'm ready. And once again, when I receive Holy Communion, it's not a cookie that I'm getting, it's not a candy. Oh, very good, you went to confession, you went through all this, great, you deserve that. No one deserves Holy Communion. We're truly blessed to be able to partake of such blessed sacraments. But when we have gone to confession in the right way, doing the things that we have to do to open our hearts and to dispose ourselves for the grace, God is, God is deli delighted because we're listening, not just with our ears, but with our heart. And by the way, I think it's beautiful that in English, the word heart in the middle has ear. We're so we ask God that we have a listening heart, that we may be able to listen with our heart to follow him. That's why confession and all the sacraments are very important. They're, they're there to help us to get to heaven. Okay, let me answer some of the questions that we have here, and then I answer the questions that you might have. I identify the sins. I know the venial from the mortal sins, and then I just confess what to do about constant repeats? Should I go to confession every year? No. I, I, would tell the per, I would tell the person, go to confession at least every month or every two, two months. It's good for the grace. When I go to confession, I do not make up any sins. I think all the sins are already invented. They're all out there. We're just picking <laughs> and, and, you know, have at it. So if you go to confession 
And if you don't have anything to tell to the priest, because sometimes people say, Father, I have not, once again, in all the place, it's just making up things. But sometimes the person might be like, Father, I don't have anything to say because I haven't done anything bad. Good. That's very good that you have not done anything bad. You, it's not that you go do something bad then so that you can go to confession. No, no. Okay, good that you have not done anything bad. But not doing anything good, that's a sin in itself. What we call the sin of omission, right? I'm not gonna write it, I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> Omitting to do the good that God has asked us to do. I don't have to be stealing or being disrespectful, I don't have to do, do anything bad. But then if I'm not doing what Peter 4, 8 says, charity, that can be a sin. Because then I'm missing the mark. I'm not doing God's will. We were not created to be good. We were created to be great. Because I can say, I'm good. I don't steal. I don't, haven't killed anyone. You were not called just to be good. You were called to be great. And that means to give of yourself, to do more, just as Jesus has done for you and for me. Make sense? So when we go to confession, and a lot of people don't confess that, those are some of the sins that are left out. We go to confession to tell the priest, to tell God, this is the things that I have done wrong, but also, these are the things that I should have done, which are good, but I did not do. So I confess that as well. I already mentioned that confession is not counseling. It's not about chatting, having a conversation with the priest. If you invite me over dinner, we can have that. We can do that later. You know, have a nice conversation. How to use confession wisely to grow in holiness. I think I kind of kind of mentioned that. Um, having going through this, making it prayerful, asking the Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us. And since our society has forgotten, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can think of uh, some of those sins, but for example, uh, society is telling us, the world out there is telling us, do it. Don't worry about it. Catholic Church, don't worry about the commandments. Don't worry. Man wants to take over God. They want to take over the, the throne of God. So society will keep constantly justifying, giving justifications for the things that are wrong. Trying to make us uh, think and convincing us that what's bad is good and what's good is bad. bad. Wrong is wrong even if everyone is doing it. Good is good, even if just you is doing it. And guess what? We have a lot, of, a lot of good being done through Holy Mother Church, through you. And that's what we're called to do, to be good, because we were created in goodness to do good and do it in a great measure. That's our calling. And many other sins, but they're all, they all fall in this, in, in this um, category that society wants to make us believe that sin is okay when it's not. We were created to get to heaven, not to be here. We were created for something greater. Oh, Lord have mercy. What to do when the priest doesn't want to hear, the, uh, hear a confession or argues about whether something is a sin? What to do? What do I do on my behalf? <laughs> if, the, if, if I don't hear the confession of someone, um, for example, if the person, as I mentioned, the person doesn't uh, feel sorry for the sins, the person um, doesn't have the, the attitude, it can happen. Uh, sometimes if I want to, and, and going back to the sins that the, the society wants us to believe that is right, but if I go to confession and I tell the priest, this is what I've done, but I don't want to hear what the church is saying. I don't want to just give me absolution. We have to have a, an attitude of humility 
before we go in. If we don't have that, even before we start uh, praying, doing the examination of conscience, we ask God to help us to humble ourselves, meaning to recognize that there is a God and I'm not He, that I need Him. So sometimes I can deny absolution. If, if, if I go to confession and, and I'm not willing to, to listen with the heart, to listen to the priest, I don't give absolution. I'm trying to be more um, specific here, but again, without breaking the seal. But um, let's say if, the person, if I go to confession and I really want to use the priest as my, as I do, as I, I want to treat the priest as I, I would treat my, my waiter or my waitress. Someone who's there to, to serve me. I go there and I pay for something and I want the service right now. That's pride. That's arrogance. That's a big sin. The devil does that with, with, with people. You are in the tribunal of mercy and you're telling God, I don't want to hear it. Just give me absolution and let, let me go. Well, guess what? We heard it at the beginning from Matthew. I have given the authority. I'm not going to give you absolution. You need to go back and pray for humility. We cannot treat God as our handkerchief to blow our nose or as a towel to clean up our mess. We can't do that with God. He is our God. He is very merciful, but he is just. So some, those are some of the, one of the examples that I can think when I, we, can, um, we cannot hear or we, or we refuse to hear someone's confession. The seal of confession, I'm going to end that with this. The seal of confession. As a priest, I cannot say anything. Nothing. If you come to me, whatever you say stays there, seal of confession. By law, canon law, the church's law, we cannot break the seal of confession. Uh, there are so, only a few examples, well, ex exceptions, I'm sorry. If the person is in danger, uh, or if the person is going to put someone else in danger, then I can I, I need to call the grab what is called the cell phone and call uh, get go to the dial and do nine one one and call the police uh, or whoever I need. Uh, make sure you hit the uh, the green button that says call. No, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> so um, if anything like that, someone it, let's say someone comes in and they have they suffer from anxiety or depression or whatever, and they're going to be a life threatening to them or to someone else, uh, then I can report it, you know, uh, for their safety. But that's the only, uh, and there are all others, but very few. The point is that I can't, and I'm not willing to, I mean, it's not my business, uh, reveal what you, what you share in the confessional. But it goes both ways. It is a twofold way here. Um, when you go to confession, what happens in the confessional stays in the confessional. Everything. As a penitent, you should not go and tell anybody what your, what your penance was. That should stay with you. It is your encounter with Christ. It amazes me as a priest when I hear people saying, Oh, Father such and such gave me this. <laughs> it makes me laugh, but... <clears throat> It is a seal of confession, an encounter with God alone, in which you open your heart and your soul for God. No one else can see that, only God. So keep it holy, keep it sacred. I'm not going to say anything. I don't have to, I don't need to. It's God's business. When I finish confession, every time I finish confession, I take off my, my, the stole. By the way, the stole is the symbol of immortality. Jesus cares when you can go to confession. His, he carries, the, the priest carries the, the, the burden, the, the, the cross that you're, that you're carrying. He gives you a shoulder. Hey, I help you out with all this misery. He's giving us that grace. So when I take, I take off the, the stole, kiss it, because it is God's symbol of, of grace. It's a holy, uh, holy instrument. And then I just tell God, God, they are your people. I pray for them, bless them, and help them to remain faithful to you. And then I just, I'm gone. 
as St. John Paul XXIII once, I love him, but he said, at the end of the night, he took out, he took out, um, took out his, um, took out his mitre, you know, the big hat that they use, the funny hat, it's called the mitre, as uh, the Bishop of Rome. He took off his mitre, he put it on the nightstand, he said, God, it is your church, I'm going to bed, have a good night. <laughs> I do the same thing, the same thing when I finish confessions. Take off my stole and I think about St. John the 23rd and I say, God, these are your people. These are your penitents. Bless them. I pray for them. Help them remain faithful to you. And then I go on with my life. What should you do? You get out of the confessional. Immediately go and pray the penance. Very easy. I'm not asking you to go to Spain and do the Camino of Compostela. I'm not asking you to do that. Something that is very doable. Do it as immediately, as soon as you can. Because if you get out of the confession and you die, you miss any of these things. God is merciful. Of course, he, he knows. But what I'm saying is that don't wait days. Before the end of the night, before you go to bed, you should be able to, to fulfill, to finish your, uh, your penance whatever prayer, whatever the priest told you to do. So do that. Then you, after you finish that, don't tell people what your penance was. That's nobody's business. Because in a way, you are revealing what you've done. Well, Father told me to pray 50 rosaries. <laughs> My goodness, what you did. <laughs> it's revealing to people. That's not their business. Well, Father told me to fast three times a week. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He told me to fast for 40 days on bread and water. <laughs> so don't tell people. It's not their business. It is The seal of confession goes both ways. Don't tell people your, your um, penance. And don't tell people what the priest told you. Because oftentimes we tend to modify. The devil wants us to rephrase or change what the priest told us to justify things for our own benefit. Well, you know what, the priest told me, I mean, we can share if it's good to help other people, but not making it like authoritatively, like definite. Because sometimes we say, well, Father told me to do that in this, in this case. Might not be exactly what the priest said. <laughs> and we're getting into maybe a little bit of gossiping here. <laughs> and it's not helping. So what I would say, well, I can share with my friends, you know, if I'm dealing with this, the priest told me to do something along these lines. But, you know, I would invite you to go to confession. Go get it for the grace. The point is to go to confession. That's the point. And we're truly blessed to have confession available pretty much every day. Here. Amen. What, a, what a blessing. So, but what happens if you break the seal of confession, if you tell your friends or whoever the penance and, the, and what the priest told you, that's not a sin. You're fine. It won't happen. Nothing happens to you. You should keep it to yourself, but if you don't keep it, it's okay. Next time, don't tell me, Father, I committed the sin that I told my friends. When I'm... <laughs> That's not a sin. It is a sin if I reveal that to anybody what you told me. And I can get my father to remind me. I'm not going to go there. So, thank you. Any okay. questions? questions? Anybody? Questions? Yes. Yeah, why don't you talk about indulgence the other Sure. Sure. Um, there are certain times in which you, um, the church, you know, the church is inviting us to go to confession, to approach the sacrament. And if you have different devotions, like um, to our Blessed Mother or whatever devotions you're doing, uh, they might ask you to go to confession, to be, you know, to prepare your soul to be ready to receive whatever grace you, you, you will be receiving. So you go to confession. Uh, there are certain um, indulgences, which is <clears throat> basically taking the temporal punishment for, from our sins, and there's a, there are requisites for that, uh, or requirements. Uh, if you go, like you said, Divine Mercy on uh, uh, Sunday, uh, the day before, or whenever you, you, you were able to make it to confession, 
And um, what happens is that you pray for our Holy Father, you pray uh, in our Father, Hail Mary, you go to Mass, go to Confession. You fulfill these obligations, and basically you're taking time off from your, um, your temporal punishment. That's what I was talking about. When we die, we have to be cleansed. We have to be purged from the things that we did here on earth. So those indulgences help us to take off that, some of that time. But we do it not for the sake of just taking some of the time off. We're not trying to get a break here. But we do it for the sake of, of, of loving God. We want to get closer to Him. But yes, confession is available. Uh, you had a question? No, I just also, but with indulgences, usually you have a couple of days. Don't you have a couple of days you could go to confession? Before? Yes, again, if the, the, the church says go this day, the day off, off yeah. or before, but yeah, I mean, okay. Holy Mother Church is so good. I mean, she helps us, you know, to get the grace. So the thing is, you got to confess. Um, what's the average time you should think of being in the confessional? Between Three and a half hours. <laughs> no, no, good question. Um, between two and four minutes. Because you already you are already prepared. You already have done that. All these things. So you go to the priest, bless me, Father. I have done this, 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 this. That's all I need. Two to four minutes. Because then I have to give you maybe some guidance, counseling, whatever, advice. And then I have to give you the absolution, the formula that I just uh, shared with you. And then tell you to go. <laughs> so that takes another a minute, a minute and a half. So two to four minutes. It is in God's time. Some people say, Father, I don't like to be rushed. Well, yes, but we have to be um, aware that more people need the sacrament. It's not just about you. It's about everyone i'm prepared i do my thing i'm not there to talk to the priest even if he's my friend or not that's not the point i got a confession then i get out and i, I try to make it have it you know available we have it available here but we make the uh, make it we use it not abuse it we make use of this sacrament in a way that is um, dignified and then i get out but some people are like, it's in God's time. Yes, it's in God's time, but God has a time too. And we have a timeline here. So if I need longer, then I can make an appointment and talk to the priest if I need more advice, whatever. Yes. Do not tell the sins of your spouse or somebody <laughs> else. Because um, sometimes, yeah, we can get it. Because, again, we are not prepared. Okay, when we're naming the sins, we are saying the sins of my spouse, my co-worker, my friend, my this, and he did that, he did that. Yes, okay. I got it. But tell me what you did. Your sin. Because I cannot give you absolution if you don't tell me what you did. And do not tell me their sins. Because sometimes I want to say, is your husband outside? Mm -hmm. Yes. Bring him in so I can give him absolution. <laughs> Just told him his sins. So it is my sin. That's why I need to open my heart to listen, to be able to recognize what I have done. Maybe my spouse contributed to this sin. Okay, but I'm doing my part. This is me. This is my uh, come to Jesus meeting with Jesus. Okay? Do you have no, you answered the follow-up. Okay. Any, anybody else? Any other questions? Do we have any questions on, on the... Uh, no. No? How many people are watching? Right now, 25. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, so that's all I have when it comes to confession. I'm sure there, there are more things, but um, I'm hoping that this was a little bit helpful, informative, practical, and what I want you to take away is to just, as I mentioned, open, open your heart for Jesus and allow yourself to receive the grace. And we have it. Let us go to confession. Go to confession, especially during this Lenten journey. We want to accompany Jesus on his way to Calvary. And what a better way that if we open our heart and we prepare ourselves to receive his grace. So let us ask our Blessed Mother to help us to be willing to follow her son, to be willing to do whatever he tells us to do. I thank you. We have three, six, nine, 13 people, and then 25, and then all the angels sitting on yes. the remaining <laughs> chairs. So I thank you for, for being here, and uh, it is truly a blessing for me to share this with you. I'm praying for you and with you at this uh, beautiful parish, and also pray for me. And we'll end up with a prayer, and then I'll give you a blessing.
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.